to The Late Show. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And you know my guest tonight as the host of something called The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Please welcome my friend, Stephen Colbert! <laughs> So how do you like being five inches lower than the host's chair? It feels right. It no. feels right. It feels about right. You gotta have status over there. I'm just saying. There. You gotta I, you have status. You deserve it. Uh, you know, host of the Late Show, you got you got, you got the status I'm, right I'm there. Re I'm ready for this. You know, I, I don't know how many people know or know deeply, as deeply as I know, how geeky you actually are. <laughs> and we, we've geeked out together a couple times. It's, it's my favorite thing to do with we, you. We had a little geek bromance, I think. We do. We do. <laughs> Open a bottle of red wine and get our geek on. A few years ago, uh, we actually did a show in a, in, a, in a school theater. We just talked for like an hour and a half about life, the universe, and everything. Yeah. And in there, you expressed a concern about uh, wanting to not know. Or is it better to know or not know? Well, that is that is the question. The, the, that the, is the, the first question. This is when you this is when you dip philosophical. Is. Sure, that that's the first question. For when I was first in college, I was a philosophy major, and I took this course. I didn't was, know the philosophy major. Yeah, that's good. and and for the for the first my. <laughs> I took a year-long course, you know, where we read uh, essentially like the great books. And at the end of it, um, there was only one test all year long, and there was only one question on the test. And we didn't know what the question was before we walked into the room. And we were told, you got to read all the material because there's only going to be one test, and that's your entire grade for the year. And the question was, is it better to know or not to know? Support your answer with one of the philosophies we have studied this year. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that was uh, when we first broached that subject. Right. That was seven years ago. Wow. We are in another time in possibly a parallel universe. I think so we're... I think which we're, side I think, of that are you on right now? I the knowing or not knowing? We're definitely in the bad timeline right now. <laughs> We're the one. <laughs> we're the bad timeline in this in the science fiction story so right this now. This is the split universe. This is the split, right? Or the other one's the split. Who knows? There could right. There could be a universe where Trump is president and you are praising him. That's there, a, there in is. the multiverse. That is a possible there is. universe. There is. <laughs> there is. In that one, I have an even worse drinking problem <laughs> than I do in this one. I've tipped over. Okay. So what's the answer now? Like, so is it better to know or not to know? Is that what you're asking me, Neil deGrasse Tyson? Uh, no, I have my answer. I'm asking your answer. Well, I'm okay. not asking you. I'm the guest on the show what I'm right saying. now. So, don't think so... I, I don't even care what you think on this show. <laughs> right. This is my show. So, what I, I, yeah, it's better to know. Better to know. I, better I agree. To know. Sure. Better to know. You can't walk blindly in the dark. Better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Do not hide your light under a bushel. You set it up on a high place that it might light those around you. Be the supernova in the darkness of the cosmos. Right. Because that's supernovas. Now, I don't know if you know this, Neil deGrasse Tyson, but supernovas, that's where gold comes from. Gold is one of the... That's one gold, of the yeah. byproducts of, one of, blow, the byproducts, of yeah. blowing stuff up in the universe. Yeah. Yeah, that we, yeah. We, we like this. Why don't we see more supernovas? If there's so many stars, and they're so bright, and they're so powerful, and, and supernovas are actually fairly common, right? Why don't we see them more often? We see them every night with telescopes. No. All right, now. Wait a second. No, no, no. Wait a second. No, no. What? Don't you what? dare. You, you, you just said that like you moved like checkmate. What does that <laughs> mean? Yes. What did you checkmate? Yes. Well, why don't you invite the rest of... Okay. No, supernova are rare. It there, goes like this. Rare? It goes like this. Just, yeah. Just. So, supernova are indeed rare, but there's 100 billion galaxies. So if you have a sample size large enough, rare things become common. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what is the single geekiest thing you've ever done? When, when I was down in New Zealand... I went to, 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 the, to the place. <laughs> to, to... Wait, wait, which what place? You went to Matamata? You went to Hobbiton? I went to Hobbiton. It's uh, so beautiful, Oh, my it? gosh. I didn't want to leave. I was just made... I wanted to be little to fit in the houses so I'd never have to leave. You, you didn't go into Bag End? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did, you, did you go into Bilbo and Frodo's home? 
Yes, I did. Okay, me too. But I had to crawl in there. Mm. Oh, I went into the full size one. No, I didn't go to the full size one. Oh, it's no, no. amazing. Yeah. I went into the full size bag end down in New Zealand on the set yeah. of The Hobbit. Right. And I was standing there at the at the mantelpiece with the fireplace, you know, where 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 Bilbo and Gandalf have their sort of argument about whether he should leave the ring for Frodo. And I put my hand on the mantelpiece and I looked down at the fireplace and my wife, I married the right girl, my wife said, let's leave him alone for a while <laughs> to the kids. <laughs> Absolutely true. I had to be alone in that room. You grew up there, if, if I understand correctly, because we go back, you, you grew up in a religious household, Catholic religious household. I, I still am in a religious household. And your, yes. father, and your father was a medical doctor? Yeah, my father was an immunologist, an, an academician. Immun yeah. Okay, so it was a, sort of an evidence-based life. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, it, so it, my father was an, a real intellectual. His idea of fun was to read French philosophy, like French humanist Christian philosophy, like Jacques Maritain and L'Ambroix. Of course, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I got <laughs> Bois, of course, his, his famous saying, the only sadness is not to be a saint. Yeah, yeah, we do that, right? We, we do. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my dad, yeah. That's it, okay. Uh, so, no, I'm just, so how did you resolve the urges of a believer to reject evidence in favor of faith? Bull what are you talking about? The urges Beep. of a believer? The urges of a believer to reject evidence? Who says that's spoken by somebody who's not a believer? Because there is no urge to uh, reject evidence. I don't think that my faith is related to evidence. There, there are different things. Okay. My faith approaches a mystery. My faith comes from a place of a need to be grateful. Like, my faith comes from a place where I am grateful for the world. And I cannot ask, answer the question, why is there something instead of nothing, as you and I have discussed many times. And so until you can tell me why there is something instead of nothing, I see a place to place my gratitude for my existence, how strange it is to be anything at all. And from there, I can extrapolate into my own tradition, which is Christianity and Catholicism, and my gratitude uh, for Christ, uh, through him all things were made. <laughs> he rehearsed that, I'm sure. But I like, I like evidence because it is better to know than not to know. And I was taught by intellectual Catholics who believed you could be a Catholic and still question your church. Yeah. <laughs> Which somebody, somebody okay, once that? said to me, what? What? somebody once said to me, oh, so you believe that you can be a Catholic and disagree with your church. There's a word for that. It's a Protestant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question here. What are you most worried about in the next century? Because a century ago, people were worried about like population and the and the and and and, and uh, uh, what's the one where you can't breathe? Uh, breathing. Breathing. <laughs> <laughs> tuberculosis. Look, they're, worried, they're worried about tuberculosis. Sure. They're worried about population overrun. They're worried about things that today that's not what anybody's worried about. Mm. I, we got asteroids. We got climate change. We got AI taking over. Uh, 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 bots that will will, will uh, run your life. I'm afraid that AI won't take over. <laughs> Because right now, it's just us running the show. And I don't know if you've seen Human's track record. It's not that it's, good. It's not that good. That's why we're all worried that when they do take over, they're done with us. Now, what, uh, I, I tell you what, about what's upset me this week is the story that um, since 1970, 60% of the world's wildlife... Uh, Large wildlife. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like uh, vertebrates, yeah, essentially, yeah. Uh -huh. has gone extinct. That's correct. But That's... by our hand. That's sad. We have, we have entered a new era where we are the primary drivers of the world's extinction, not asteroids. It's bad. But what worries me more is 100 years from now, what would be on their list that we don't even know yet that we should be worried about? Super intelligent jellyfish. <laughs> Stephen Colbert, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>